third option a young girl has if she finds herself pregnant, which I happen to think is one of the more positive options available to girls today, but not without pain. It's going to carry consequences. It's adoption. The ability of a young girl to take the child she's carried with her for nine months and loves with everything she is, to say, I want what's best for my child, and I'm not it. And I am willing to go through this pain to give my child a family. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of maturity, and a lot of love. Two million requests for adoption will go unanswered every year in this nation. Girls, please hear this. This is primarily going to affect you. Infertility, the inability to have children of your own biologically, has risen over 500% in the last eight years, in the 90s alone. In fact, we are now spending $4 billion a year on fertility treatment, and we have had mo more multiple births in the 90s because of fertility drugs than in the entire history of our nation up to this day. We've got so many more couples who can't have children and no infants available. Average adoption now takes between 8 and 10 years and costs between 10 and $20,000. Takes a lot of love for a girl to give her child a family and to give that couple the privilege of being parents. 34 years ago in Michigan, a young 15-year-old became pregnant. She had a lot of difficult choices to make, maybe more so than some young girls. She was raped. Abortion was legal in the 60s for rape. But this young girl chose to give her child life and then to place that child with an adoptive family. And that child was me. My biological father is a rapist. I don't even know my nationality. But I am still a human being. And I still have value. And my life isn't worth any less than any of yours just because of the way I was conceived. And I did not deserve the death penalty because of the crime of my father. And I've listened to the rhetoric all my life. And I've listened to people say, well, every child should be wanted and planned. Well, I wouldn't have an abortion. That's, that's terrible. But, but if it were rape, well, then you're a mistake, Pam. I don't believe that. I believe that every child is wanted by someone. And I believe that God, in his mercy, had a plan for me. And I can't explain it to you. And you can't explain it to me. And I've asked all the hard questions. Don't think I haven't. Did God plan me? Did God plan rape? Because I don't know if I'd serve a God that did that. Did God look down that night in November of 1964 and say, Oops, what am I going to do with that? I don't know. But let me tell you something I do know, students. I know that my God is so awesome and so amazing that He is capable of taking your worst pain, whether it was something that you chose or whether it was something that was done to you. And my God can make something very beautiful come from that. It's called amazing grace. The ability of God to take even the pain in our lives, the ashes of our lives, and make something good come from that. I don't know how and I don't know why. I just know we can. I've not met my birth mom someday. I hope to. If I don't meet her here on earth, I'm going to meet her in heaven. I've been praying for her since I was four years old. And when we meet, I'm going to wrap my arms around her and I'm going to tell her I love her because she loved me. Loved me enough to give me my life and then loved me enough to give me the next most special gift I was ever given and that's my family. Since I wouldn't want any of you sitting in this room to ever have to make a choice like this. I spent nine years of my life walking girls through these choices. There is no easy way out. The best choice is before you have sex. After that, it's going to get really tough.